John Daly's second shot on this 395-yard par four. Well, he hit a sand wedge on every other hole, so I'm going to imagine this is a sand wedge. Bobby, how long a sand wedge was it? 101 yards, and it was an L wedge, the 60-degree club, which is going to back up a lot. I can't imagine this guy having any clubs in his bag other than, like, an 8-iron, a 9-iron, and a wedge, maybe five wedges. Well, he does have three wedges. He has a 60-degree, a 56, and a 52. And really, he's getting use out of them this, because this course is so short for him. Back at 12. John Daly, stalking, stalking. Oh, oh he thought he had it. He will walk. He will get, uh, the ball gets halfway there. He will start walking and let you know that he's made the putt. Once in a while, he'll come back and get you. The ball will just sit there and just stick its tongue out at you. Boy, does he play fast. This guy's got roller skates on. He's got some interesting holes coming up now, the 14th hole. Which uh, indicates why he's only one behind John Daly and two in front of Guy and Faldo and company, and now Daly with an eight iron. Bobby, are you there? Yes, I am, Ben. That's a nine iron. I yeah. read it read. We were told eight iron, but that's nine. That's correct. I can reconfirm the daily. Well, he has overcome the double bogey at the eight, and he has been steady and fearless. And they go back to Ben Wright with the call at 13. And the players have reached the green, and uh, Daly will putt with very little ado. He's just, uh, he's so quick, it's very refreshing. Let's have a look at his front side which was going swimmingly until that extraordinary sand wedge that flew 148 yards into the water at the eighth hole otherwise without a blemish although for him not to birdie the ninth was not too great he obviously ate up the par 5 11th hole and Bobby Clampett is down there and we get a read from you on this well I've decided Daly's putt at seven inches for right to left break. It's coming downhill. He's got a little ridge to contend with in between he and the hole. Not a real difficult putt. The pin is located on a fairly flat spot, so speed shouldn't be a real critical factor here, but it is a 30-footer. Do you think, uh, Bobby, that he thinks about lagging? think he's going for everything. It looks to me as if he just has a slam at everything. He doesn't seem to have much uh, regard for finesse. Well, he's trying to make this putt. There's no question about that. He's not going to try to hit it three or four feet by the hole, but he wants to hit it about a foot or so past the hole and give it a chance. What a, what a chance uh, bag-carrying job for Jeff Medlin, better known as Squeaky, who is Nick Price's regular caddy, and picked up John Daly when Price, uh, because his wife is expecting and probably has to be by now, left uh, the spot open, and Brad Bryant didn't take it up. A little high. Beautifully struck. You can get maybe not John Daly. I don't think he'll be playing right of the creek, Pat. Watch this. Creek doesn't go at an angle. It kind of goes up the fairway and then directly left. So to carry that, it's just about 270 to get to the fairway. I don't think he's going right, is he, Bobby? And this is uh, 260 yards to the to clear the water hazard from where John Daly's going to be teeing it off, but it's directly into the wind. There it is from above, that severe dog leg. That's seen from the Fuji. Oh, this is going left, and it's long and no problem. Oh, my. Daly, who won't take much time, and Bobby Clampett's there with him. 170 yards, I believe he's got a nine iron in the wind, helping him a little bit right to left. A nine iron, you say? I believe so, and it looks like it's all over the flag. It's going to be tight. Watch this one. Look at this track, which you're watching now. 
I'm just enjoying it. I'd love to see a young guy play well. I mean, we have so many young players that are good players, and the only way that you know we're going to get stars in this game is have some of the young players do some things. And uh, I think that's terrific. It's great for the game of golf to watch John Daly do this. Does he remind you of anyone? Can you see him? Well, I don't know who he reminds me of, but I, I haven't seen. I've never seen anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of age, Jack, there have been a couple of stories going around in the last week. Payne Stewart really instigated it by saying that you are too old to play on the U.S. Ryder Cup team. What's well, your response think, to that? I don't really think age has a whole lot to do with it. I think that he, he's the captain. He must make that choice and have yeah. to get the right 50 thing. yards, probably a 9-9, a little downwind. And let's go back and see Big John, see what he does here. You know, if he doesn't make it, he'll scare it. Pat, I have to feel it again that, that the putt he made at number 10 for par was the whole blueprint of the back nine. No, no. Well, that's one time he didn't start that walk. He knew he figured he didn't make it as well. Pretty easy par four. And no question about who's been the story of this week's PGA Championship. It John Daly. He's still on con cruise control. That's the way he set his car when he came up here. <laughs> that is about 40 yards past that bunker. And we've got John Daly with only 205 yards left for his second shot. Bobby, I'm afraid to ask you what iron this is. I believe it's a six iron, a little right of the floor, but it'll feed down a little left. Well, that was Bobby Jones who said about Jack Nicklaus. He plays a game within which I'm not familiar. Jack Nicklaus, you may say the same thing. Time he's taking over a shot sometime. him play it's just a function of confidence when you're swinging as well as he is and you're hitting the kind of shots that he has and particularly considering the fact he's making so many birdies seven birdies in an eagle yesterday thus far today he's made four birdies Team to 11 under. 16. We've just got unconfirmed reports that the blimp has been ordered to raise about a thousand feet away from this guy's drives. They're well out of the way. <laughs> you gotta love it, long and straight. Nothing bad. I'm just guessing if it's a wedge or a nine iron. We now know it's a nine iron. never seen an exhibition of strength and power overwhelming a golf course like this. Right edge putt. Let's see if he starts walking. Well, you can tell right off the bat whether he's going to make it or not, because if he knows he made it, he just take two steps as soon as he hits it. Kind of pulverized that one. Screens are getting faster as the day wears on. Taking the water out. Danny remains at minus 11. Just taps that little two and a half footer in. No problem. Check. Back to the team. Four on. Daly leading by three. Hates it. Wow. Now. He's got a steeply downhill lie with a great wall of grass. This is the predicament of John Daly. It's just impossible. And he really did. All he could do was to hit it hard and cut it. 
and it rolls away and away and away into the into the raft of John Daly down the slope. That's Well, he's got a sizable putt for his bogey. Yeah. What a brave putt that was. But now the lead is only two with the awesome and difficult 18th to play. Remember, water down the entire right-hand side. The most difficult hold yesterday, John Daly, at whom you look, hit driver, seven iron. And made birdie. Talk about his finish. Looks a bit like Freddie Couples. <laughs> Unless you go back on that tee, Pat, and look at this drive, hole to drive, it's the most one of the most intimidating holes to drive I've ever seen. the tee, you come down the side of it, and you got the water on the right-hand side, and it goes down about 10, 12 feet left, which you don't see there in the rough. And it's one of the most difficult driving holes the pros will find all year. Toughest hole in the course. And the tournament. I don't know what iron he has. Probably the same as he had before, seven iron or eight iron. He's got an eight iron. Getting shorter each time it was the clubs. Wow. The driver and an eight iron for this most difficult hole on the golf course, the most difficult hole for the three days of the tournament. And listen. As John Daly approaches the final hole in the third round of the PGA of 1991. The man of the hour, John Daly. Now yesterday, he came here, he had about a 12-footer, took a practice stroke, put the club behind the ball, took one look, and bango, he hit it. And made it. Yes, this may be a two-looker. Let's see. the last two days what Nicholas would have given for that when he double bogeyed it the first two days and then bogeyed it today <laughs> Daly has played it in two under Nicholas has played it in five over well, the ultimate underdog, John Daly, has overpowered this course again. A heroic 69. He's at 11 under par. I turn around here. No penalty on the shot. No penalty. I didn't even wear what was going on. It was maybe a shock to me, but uh, definitely didn't use the flag, and I don't think Squeaky did either. Well, congratulations on your play. Is this going to affect you at all tomorrow? No, I'm just going to stay the same. I, it would have hurt me a little bit if it would have been two shots, but uh, I'm just going to go out and fire at the hole and, and see if I can't win this thing. All right. Good luck tomorrow, James. Fairway has 100. 28 yards. This is a sand wedge. Um, and the lie is not good. If you had to anything more than an 8 iron, you couldn't get it on it. I could start a lawn with that dip they just made there. And this is a very good shot from that oh, spot. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. The strength and muscle he needed to get that ball out of that lie was intense. What you got here? Yeah. I believe it's a 9 iron. 9 iron. 9 iron, 172 yards. Holy mackerel. is John Daly. Yeah. Well, he's just unflappable. He's brilliant. His short game is as good as the awesome power of his long game. How often do you see a long drive champion fade into oblivion because he hasn't got a golf game to go with it? But this boy has. 
He now has a five-stroke lead after that silky putt. He is a phenomenon. I think he's earned a little. Two. Yeah, 231. John Daly, 167 yards now. Nine iron is caddy, squeaky toe. Got him by 64 yards. It's going a little bit right, but it should catch the slope and dribble down. Just about pin high in the heart of the green. That's not old faithful, it's a broken pipe. John Daly leads. You know, the stub meter's 10.6, about average for the 18 greens. That's the first one he has to run by the hole. That's Pat. right. That's the first one you could call a bag, really. Five shot lead. I think it's about time you start lagging. I think so too. I'd be surprised if Kenny Knox doesn't make this. Kenny Knox is inside his putt. He hit a two iron inside his putt. And Kenny Knox had to move his coin because right on the same line. Look at this. I mean, that's about as simple of short putting I have ever seen. And it's, it's just not, uh, there wasn't one exception where it went. What amazes me most of all, in addition to the power, is the balance. He's flown a bunker that it's 280 yards to carry from the tee. He's left himself with a mid iron to the ground. Now this is a whole Ken Venturi. There's out of bounds to the left. I mean, if you were going to get in trouble, here was one of the holes you could have done it on, and he played fearlessly. Would be one that wouldn't last, but at 225, Bobby Clampett, what iron does he have? 211 to carry the bunker, nine more to the flagstick, 220. He's got a five iron. The wind's helping him from just right. It's a big iron for even John, and it's going right at the flag, drawing just a hair. I think it's long enough. It's pin high left, but he's chipping right back up the hill. And we'll be back with John Morgan. Daly right up the hill. He's got great hands on the shot. <laughs> you know, he thought he made that. As soon as he chipped it, he started walking. I really think he thought he made eagle there. Thus far this week, this man has made 20 birdies and one eagle on a golf course, which many said was the hardest. The lead is six. John Daly with a birdie move to three under par through 15 holes, 14 in all, and enjoys a six shot lead. Mr. Cord at 16. Bentley, let you and I hang on to the towers because we might get sucked in from the draft here. He's got a mere 260 yard carry over the corner of this big, huge wall it is of this bunker, and here we go. I absolutely love it. They call him Wild Thing. You make my heart sing. You make everything short. It's 150 yards and downwind, and if it's not a wedge, then it's a little nine iron. Pin is way back in the right. Water's to the to the right of this pin. He'll be shooting it left. That was not to the left of the flag. That was right at for a birdie. Just trying not to fall down. Look at this, he's lagging. Come on, John, go for it. I think he's probably hit that ball so hard that it's kind of running out of steam. Yeah. The rubber bands are probably all busted on it. 
He's got to go through a dozen around. Every grain, Kenny, they're standing up, applauding, standing ovation, they're going nuts. On the left, and you can just see, there you see his earnings this year. He's got a four iron. Well, he's done it again. But this time, not so bad, because on the floor of that bunker, he's got about a 12-foot wall in front of him. But he's also got a five-stroke cushion over his nearest rival, Bruce Litsky. $85,000 if he hangs on to this tie with Jim Gallagher, Jr., but now the man of the hour. Again, but the players have missed on the left, mostly. But he can afford to miss this, as long as he doesn't do anything quite crazy. Well, he's left himself a sizable putt coming back. And he will take no time at all. It's as if it was a $2 Nassau. And he's, got, he's, won, he's beaten his opponent about seven ways, I would think. Hmm. Hmm. Now 18 suddenly becomes a, a much more interesting hole because when you think that Floyd and Nicholas have peppered their balls into the water in the lake there on the first two or three days, then uh, it isn't. Back at 17. That was the double bogey. Watch this. I started the first hole on Thursday like this, and I'm going to go just as hard here at the 72nd. That John's got a uh, eight iron, I believe, just in the edge of the left rough. Just wants to get this on the putting surface, and it's a good line. Left center of the green should be about the right. Dustin Watch the feed down now. Get up there. Same place Litsky made his putt from. And now listen, the applause won't stop. Controversy yesterday rattled him at all. It certainly didn't show. I, I really liked his answer when they asked him, well, what do you think it'll take to win? He said, I don't know. I've never been here before. The story has now become, become familiar. He drove this tonight. Alternate. He didn't even know if he was in the tournament on Wednesday night. Kenny Knox, even though he's shorter, will finish out. I really do. End on a good note right here. Get it.
it all. 